Hello. Uh, I work at Esri on a team called Learn ArcGIS. We create and maintain a collection of lessons uh, or tutorials that are based on real world scenarios using ArcGIS. These lessons are used a fair bit by professors and other educators, and we started getting some requests for larger packages of content, uh, essentially to create um, entire courses on specific topics that a teacher could reuse. My manager, Riley Peake, asked if I could create such a, car such a resource for cartography, um, and I said yes. So the first thing I had to do was figure out what that might look like. And uh, after talking to some cartography professors and other cartographers at Esri, I determined that professors weren't actually the highest impact audience for me. So I shifted my goals to target students directly and to include students who aren't technically students, i.e. self-learners. I wanted to create a course that would benefit three kinds of people. First, a university student in a GIS class who wants some more help with this topic. Uh, second, a GIS professional who wants to make better looking maps, but hasn't necessarily had the time or opportunity to study cartography before. And third, a GIS or cartography educator who wants up-to-date lab content for their class. So fast forward to today and I can show you what the result is. So this is a curated set of resources. What I mean is that all of the content that is in this course can be found elsewhere in Esri's ecosystem. But here I'm giving you a short list of resources that I would recommend. If somebody came to me and said, hey, I'm really excited about learning cartography. There's two calls to action. You could start the course directly, or if you're feeling a little bit overwhelmed by everything, you could click I'm a beginner and you'll get a kind of pre-course where you can try out some training wheels, just generally get a feel a little bit more comfortable with um, your skills before starting. I have a two minute video here. It's essentially a little advertising for the course, but I'm gonna skip down and get into the nitty gritties. Um, most importantly, what is covered? This course doesn't cover everything. There's no raster, so 3D, topographic mapping, animation, JavaScript. Those things are all so cool and important, but they're not covered here. Um, this course really is just about making 2D thematic maps with vector data. And I think that makes a nice baseline for launching into those other topics later. The course does cover both static mapping and web mapping. And in fact, you can do this entire course in ArcGIS Pro, or you could do the entire thing in ArcGIS Online. I have equal resources to cover the main concepts and skills in either product. Or you could do both, which of course is my personal recommendation. Now, finally, how long is this course? Um, if you do every piece of content in here, and mind you, there's quite a bit, uh, it will take at least 22 hours. And that's why I have gone through and tagged an essential lesson for each of the chapters. You know, this is a self-directed course. That means everything in it is optional. And realistically, I, I don't imagine that many people will do the entire thing. So Try out the essential lessons if that's you. And actually, uh, if you do um, all of the essential lessons from all of the chapters in only one product, that should take about five hours. So I'm not going to go through all of the content with you. I'm just going to focus kind of on those essential lessons. And uh, after that, I will go through a bit of the structure of the course. So chapter one uh, is about planning your map. And really, uh, this is all about ingraining critical thinking about your map from the start. Uh, mapping with purpose, the essential lesson here, is the only essential lesson that um, is not a tutorial. This is just a blog article that you read. So I'm starting you out easy. Let's look at some maps, get excited about making maps. And, and here we're um, looking at different ways that the same data set can be displayed in order to convey different intentions or messages. And hopefully, um, at the end, I'm also giving you the right tools to help think about what the purpose of your map is. Chapter two is about symbols. And the essential lesson here is a tutorial um, where you make a population map of Indonesia in either ArcGIS Pro or ArcGIS Online. These are different lessons uh, with different steps, but you cover the same 
concepts and skills, and you end up with essentially the same map at the end. Now, this lesson covers a lot of common concepts like classification, normalization, color schemes, color connotation, color blindness, layer order, proportional symbols, base maps versus thematic map, uh, thematic data, transparency, blending, but it's only in one hour, so we don't go into depth. The greater focus um, is how to apply those concepts in the map. So there's different kinds of content in this course. Uh, the first thing we looked at was a blog article. This one is uh, what we call a Learn ArcGIS lesson. Um, and what that, that is, is a very specific formula that we have for writing tutorials. It means we're gonna provide you with all of the data that you need. It's pretty rigorously edited to make sure the steps are unambiguous, the instructions are interspersed with explanations. And these lessons get tested and updated for current releases. Uh, and also um, they get translated into six different languages, which I think is pretty cool. Chapter three is about projections, important systems. Uh, one of my personal favorite topics. The essential lessons here are different based on what product you're going to be using. In the pro lesson, choose the right projection. Um, we look at three different maps and learn why in each case Web Mercator isn't the right choice and um, use some actual resources and tools to help you choose a better coordinate system. So it's not, it's not just pure fluffy data uh, theory, we're gonna learn some skills. Now for the ArcGIS Online component, we learn how to make a web map without Web Mercator. Uh, if you haven't done that before, essentially you have to choose a base map that is in the projection you want. So that's what we do in the first part, but then sometimes you don't have a base map in the projection you want. So you can actually make one in ArcGIS Pro, and I walk you through how to do that. Chapter four, manipulating data, data management. Um, I did not create these resources. They were already created by the documentation teams. And I think that they do a great job of covering some essential skills like how to turn a CSV file into a map layer, how to edit an attribute table, how to do a join. Uh, it doesn't sound that exciting, but these are huge stumbling blocks for students and new users who just want to make cool maps and they get stuck because their data is not in the format they need. Um, I did put this chapter a little bit farther along in the course um, than it probably belongs because I was worried about learners getting scared and bored if this was the first thing they saw and they really just wanted to make some cool map symbols now that they've now maybe they've lost their enthusiasm. So um, my hope is that by the time they get to chapter four, they would have run into a few problems, but by now appreciate the value of this knowledge. But I'm curious what uh, you guys all think uh, about this chapter placement. Chapter five, we get back to the fun and flashy stuff. Um, presentation, the essential lesson is all about creating layouts. So what you do is you open up this project in ArcGIS Pro, the map is already made for you. We don't even talk about how to make the map. The whole lesson is really just focused on that layout. So you build a layout, you add all sorts of custom elements to it, and you end up with this poster map of languages in India. Really fun. At least I thought it was fun. Um, but how do you do that in a web map? Uh, so we call them web apps, but in my opinion, a web app really is just an interactive layout for an interactive map. And in ArcGIS, there's a lot of different products that help you to create web apps. But in this lesson, we use ArcGIS Experience Builder, uh, which is a GUI tool. There's no coding involved, but you have a lot of customization control. It's kind of an advanced tool. Um, and in this lesson, I walk you through how to use that tool to create this web app. Um, you can see some of the text from the poster that we looked at earlier is coming through, but you can do some other things like just filter to a single language. Um, the second map that was on the poster is now on a different tab. And, um, there's some text to explore some of the stories that came through in the data. So uh, actually, I actually built this course itself also in Experience Builder. Um, so I think it's a great cartographic tool to explore. Now, the last chapter, put it all together, is the conclusion chapter. So here we have an essential lesson for each product that builds a map from the start to the finish. And along the way, we're going to touch all of the themes that were in the previous five chapters. 
The uh, Arches Online lesson was written by Diana Lavery, who was a big help to me in this course generally. And in this lesson, she offers some great instruction with ArcGIS Arcade, which is really the tool that you need to break through the defaults and create great cartographic products for ArcGIS Online. All right, so now we've looked at some of the content. I want to talk a bit about the structure of the course. Uh, as you know by now, there are six chapters, and some chapters have a lot more content than others, which I decided was okay. But they all follow kind of the same structure. You have a, an essential lesson, you have a series of subtopic pages, cover other topics, then there's a challenge activity, and then there is an additional resources page. So let's look at one of these other topics first. Um, and each one will have, you know, two to three resources on it. Now, these resources range from tutorials to videos to articles. Some of them are how-tos, uh, some are purely conceptual, and most are somewhere in between. They're mostly written by other people at Esri. Um, there's a lot in there from John Nelson, for example, so thank you, John. And I intend to switch these cards out from time to time as newer materials become available. So for the challenge activity, I'll look at the symbols chapter for an example. Um, my idea here is that the learner has probably so they're probably coming here while already working on a map, maybe for school or for work. And this activity can hopefully help them apply what they learned in the chapter to their current project. So uh, in this case, uh, the questions are, um, use your own data and symbolize it with three methods. Question one, what is the message that you want to convey with this map? You know, that's covered in chapter one, the planning chapter, but it's reiterated throughout the course. Question two, of the different symbology methods you tried, which one works best for your data, your message, why? And question three, try three different color schemes for your map, which one works best and why? I really just wanted to encourage people to spend less time worrying about knowing what the right answer is, the right method, what are the rules they need to follow, and spend more time just experimenting with the options and learning how to assess which one is best for their map. You know, if I try these three things, which one's getting the message across best? All right, and let's look at an additional resources page. Although I'm not gonna spend much time talking about this, I think it's fairly self-explanatory. Now, at the end of chapter six, things get a little bit different. Uh, instead of doing a challenge activity, there's a capstone project where you are supposed to apply all the skills from the previous five chapters into this map you make. I provide you with the data. Um, but it's a lot of data. So part of your task is really just paring that down to a, a smaller set that you can tell an impactful story with. Now, that's not an easy task. This is a difficult capstone project, I think. But um, by this point, you should have all of the skills that you need in order to accomplish it. And I'll take you to the last page. Uh, what next? Now, as I said earlier, um, this course doesn't cover everything. Um, for example, there's no terrain visualization. There's no 3D mapping. Uh, but here, I provided you with one recommended tutorial for each of those next topics in cartography. So you can go off and have lots of fun learning those cool things too. I'm going to end this presentation with a call for feedback. I have a button at the bottom. So you could send me feedback in this form. You know, you could type your thoughts into the Slack channel, or you could email me directly. And I'm actually going to bring up the URL again for you guys see. Um, <clears throat> but either way, I would love to know how to make this course better. And I think that you are the right audience to help me do that. So thank you very much for listening. And I look forward to hearing your thoughts.